Hi everyone, so today we're going to be fitting um, some audio equipment and I've got Greg here to help me. Hi. Hello Greg. Um, so uh, he's the expert so I'm just going to be um, helping out. Okay, so this is the head unit which we'll be fitting in today as well. Uh, this is a Pioneer AVH X3500 DAB. Um, that's the actual unit there. I did already have it fitted but obviously we've just pulled it all out. Um, but that's what we will be fitting today. Uh, so we'll kind of do uh, step by step on this, we'll do a little video for each one um, and then just show everybody what each cable does and also where to map them to the van because I know a lot of people struggle with that. So basically we're just going to bring the RCAs and the remote down this way just because it's easier and it's going to be able to save a bit more cable because uh, okay. it's got a long way to go. Yeah. Um, so just sort of brought them through underneath any sort of like actual sort of factory built hanger. So something just like this, something you can just sort of scoot around and potentially either cable tie to there, uh, just to sort of keep it out of the way. Luckily on these they've got a foot panel, like a sort of kicker plate that goes under there um, and that will hide all the cables out of the way anyway, so you're not going to look at anything ugly. And then, yeah, and then from there you're just going to pretty much be bringing them up, round, and in this instance, in this application, it's best just to go through where this rubber trim is, sort of nice big area to work in, it's not going to pinch. So just going to bring them down around here underneath this foot plate and then we'll just bring it round to there. Okay so got some of the cables through so all the cables we've been talking about the speaker wire, the RCAs and the remote are all sort of attached. You've got the remote at the top, the thin blue one, You've got the speaker cables for the 6x9s and the RCAs at the bottom and then that big blue Thick wire that is the live, if I'm correct. So, uh, yep, 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 power for the for the woofer. Okay, so the power cable, um, which is just connected just there. So, one end goes to the positive terminal on the leisure battery, and the other end will connect straight to the amplifier. Okay, so, we've had to source a point for the ground, um, so which uh, we've had to scrape back the, the painted um, surface, so make sure it's bare metal. And then Greg has just put a bolt through because we obviously can't get a screwdriver in, so we've bolted it backwards. Come through here, uh, got the end of the cable there. We're just going to make sure it has, well, is earthed. So, the easiest way to do that is get your multimeter. Each one's a little bit different, but continuity. Put it on one end, and something that you know is earthed. So, in this case, door latch. Like that, and that should go all the way down. There you go, and that's how you know you've got continuity. So now we know that that's earthed, we can check that the live is fully connected. So again, hook that up there, switch your multimeter to on the volts to 20, and then just going to pop it to the power on the amplifier and you should get 12, 12 volts. The two channel amp which is bridgeable, so they've bridged the negative and positive here on left and right to send to the woofer speaker itself so what we're going to do for the 6x9s is just go off each channel as you would normally uh, and that will still then give you some decent sound from the from the 6x9s. So left speaker will just go off your, your left hand side, right speaker off the right hand side uh, so you can just again go straight onto these most decent sort of two channel or monoblock style amplifiers will have a, will have a setup like this um, so you can just either get Bridget or run it normally as well. So yeah, so on here um, it's relatively adjustable, I mean some amps you can go into some crazy detail with, um, but main parts here obviously just like treble uh, and your bass input, so again you just like would tune those two to what you prefer to listen to depending on the type of music. Uh, here you've got your, your high pass and your low pass filter and what these do is stop effectively certain frequencies being played so if you've got your high pass filter on that's going to stop uh, anything um, over a certain uh, certain hertz range being played so you'd put your high pass filter on if you were just primarily using bass um, to so sort of give that low down sort of bass, rumble, all that sort of stuff um, a lot of time people just kind of have them off uh, just because a lot of it can be done through head units as well. So what would you recommend on this particular setup we've got with two 6x9s? Uh, so with two 6x9s I would probably just have it off Okay. at this point because otherwise your 6x9s will just play bass as well Okay. Uh, which is 
sort of defeating the objects. Six by nines are very good at doing that. Um, but the ones you've got are coaxial as well, so they have got inbuilt tweeters. So you, to get a better range of sound, um, I would just at this point have this off. And when it comes to the actual sort of frequency adjustment, uh, this one's not got an amazing frequency adjustment, but it has got one. At that point, then I would just kind of again leave that where it is in between 70 and uh, 111, just to give you a sort of more even, even sound range. Of course, then you've got the gain, which is sort of like your primary volume. So you just leave this alone until you get that, you know, your sound to where you usually listen to, so like a certain volume. And then you can just adjust this so that way you're not overpowering yourself with too much bass. I mean, alternatively, you can just turn it all the way up and deafen yourself. Um, <laughs> But yeah, some some people are into that, like proper bass heads. But uh, to get like a good clear sound, you'd want to have that at a point where what you traditionally listen to, what volume, you want to have that sort of like matched quite nicely. And again, just RCA inputs, uh, input and output on this. So you can then just input it from your head unit. Then you could output this to another amplifier if you want to get more amps involved. Yeah, if you're trying to build like a more sort of competition system, you know. If you're, you know, if you've got limited space, a uh, limited number of RCA ports on the back of the head unit, we're quite lucky the head unit we're using has got plenty of RCA ports on the back, um, so we probably wouldn't use this if we didn't have to. Uh, okay, so this is the reverse camera, um, which is installed on the back of the door there. Um, so obviously we're retrofitting this, so that's all been done, also done previously. Um, we're going to send this through to the front of the cab, and now we're going to run it through. Um, I had it on a different route, but I'm just going to run it through with the rest of the wires. Um, we figured out yesterday there was a problem with the amp, so we've changed the amp over. Um, and all the same wiring, still the same sort of setup, so just go off of that. Just going to talk you through the new amplifier we've got. So we've got rid of the kicker and we're using a, a juice one that uh, I sort of had lying about that I knew worked. Um, so we've stepped up, so that last one I believe was around sort of 400, uh, about 400 watts. Uh, this one here is 1200 watts, uh, so it's much better as an actual sort of bass driver itself. Um, with the cab we've got now, it's probably running about 600 watts consistently at 4 ohms. Uh, this one is actually 2 ohm safe as well, so if you wanted to really go crazy you could do. Uh, so just on the side here, we've got a bit more adjustability. Than the last one, we've got much more adjustability on our frequencies here, both at low and high. Um, and if you didn't have RCAs, these this sub did come with a kit, so you could use a, its own sort of high uh, high to low converter. Uh, so here we've got obviously just our crossover settings. Right now we've just got the the high on, uh, so that's not going to play any vocals. It's just going to play bass for us. And we've got it set nice and low to get a nice, nice deep, nice deep sound on the on the tracks. And on the other side, it's pretty much business as usual. So your 12 volt, your remote, your ground, and your inputs. This sub here, uh, sorry, this amplifier here is bridgeable. So we've literally got the uh, the sub running on the two outer ones, and then six by nines will just use the two channels as the last one. Okay, so everything's all done now. Just putting it all back in. Uh, just finishing off trims there. Uh, but yeah, that's all back in, uh, but all the wires are now in. I've left some spare just down there um, for the 6x9s, which I'm going to put into the bottom of these plates here. Uh, put a piece of wood in there and then how to sink them into there. And that wood will match the same as this furniture here. So the plan is to um, change the seats up front. That is obviously where this double seat was. Um, and I'm going to get a Mazda RX-80 which will be coming in here on single bases on the swivel plates so we can flip them around. Now we've hooked up our remote to the, um, to the amplifier and to the remote on the radio. Uh, couldn't use what was left on there, it's too, way too short so I just get a bit of tape on that at some point to stop it, stop it shorting out on anything. I mean to be honest with you there's a lot of plastic back here anyway. So it's, un it's unlikely it's gonna gonna do anything, but uh, just play it safe. Uh, in the case, just hooking up things like aerial, uh, infotainment, uh, USBs, obviously um, RCAs, and with any sort of Pioneer touchscreener and did a lot of touchscreen units, you'll have this green cable just here, which is your handbrake cable. Now traditionally, you'd hook this up to the handbrake switch, but there is a way around it because effectively this is just an earth. So what you can do is just undo one of these little tiny screws. Hook it on there, 
tighten it back up, bit of tape over it, make sure it don't go nowhere, and do it that way. That way then the head unit thinks the handbrake's on all the time, so you can just go ahead and use your, your head unit as you would normally. Whilst you're driving as well. Whilst you're driving as well. And but just for a disclaimer purpose, that is illegal and you shouldn't be doing this. But we are. Just because it's easier and it saves trying to root all the way to the handbrake switch. Um, so just use a bit of common sense. And also got the hookup for the reverse camera as well. So what we're going to do is attach the RCAs to the rear speakers instead of the subwoofer just because we're going to run 6x9s. And if we attach them all to the subwoofer output then the 6x9s are most likely are just going to only make bass. Um, which is great if you're into that but we're trying to get some something a bit more out of them. Uh, so with our amplifier set up we can do it this way and get the amplifier to do the work instead of getting the head unit to do the work. Okay, so I've got the unit in. There it is there. The um, reverse, turn the reverse light on. So if I put obviously it into reverse, the camera will pop up. See behind the car. Take it back out. Switches back over. I do have to set that up on a separate line just because it, it always stays on that blank screen. But there it goes back to the menu. Um, the DAB which we've installed up in the top window there, just to wax, go behind the um, A pillar and then back into the unit. So if we go onto the DAB, there's there, um, play it now. Switch the station, so free select, the radio 2. Radio was lost without you and. Oh, I love it. Absolutely yeah, love that song. working nicely. And, uh, it, you know, it'll always be a special song for me now. Okay, we're uh, going to go to the family album. Okay, so at the moment I need to change the front speakers. Uh, the right side is actually blown, so I need to sort that one out. Um, so that's the next sort of bit. Um, what else have we got on here? We go to, obviously the disc was playing a minute ago. For this. Um, right, so let's go to Bluetooth, which connects to my phone as well. So if we search, it uses iPhone. We've tested that already. Phone calls come in okay. Um, you can control sort of YouTube, anything Bluetooth really, just to control it on that. So that all works nicely. And then also, finally, we put in a DVD. So we'll take this disc up. This is a DVD of some surfing stuff. Take that out. See the DVD in. And then this also plays. So what Greg did earlier was uh, obviously bypass it. To get past that, he just sort of grounded it, which we explained in the, um, uh, sorry, after in the, in, earlier in, in the other video. So we see now that's kind of working. I'll skip some of this. <clears throat> you can see that's all working nicely. Sound comes through. That's all connected to the sub and the amp and everything at the back, so it's all running nicely now. This connector here is for an iPad, which you can plug in and then operate from there as well. Um, I'll probably at some point do something better than this. It's a bit long, it's a bit, a bit naff, so we'll. Uh, Maybe just have a nice little connection put in there. Cheers, Greg. How are you getting on? No worries. <laughs> getting there. Where are you?